What's up, guys? Welcome to the Reload Podcast. Tone, shout out. There's a huge fade in from the music. I like it. It's not abrupt. Always oh, getting the uh, Rage Against the Machine, Bulls on Parade. It's a remix. It's the Team Awesome remix, I think it is. Um, it's, it's, it's a great tune. Always gets the blood moving, get the day started. But what's up, guys? My name is Cody Luongo, if I didn't already say that. And welcome to the Reload Podcast, your home for competitive Counter Strike. Um, and in the last. Uh, hour two hours alone there's been a lot dropping mouse sports uh releasing their full roster we'll get into that um some possible transfer rumors of sunny going to ents although there's a bit of dispute with the ceo of ents um in that particular case so we'll go into a little bit of that and obviously the massive update the patch notes dropped yesterday 313 and we'll break that down for you guys um huge economy update again uh as a as a bigger larger question and also some fine tunings to the weapons. But before we get into that, let's talk about a quick uh, quick bit of the news story. So first off, you have 3D Max losing their CSGO team. Uh, the French team explained that, and I quote, has grown, the team has grown faster than the organization. Uh, so the players were informed by management that they would not be able to deliver on promises that were made. Fair enough. Um, sometimes you just get a dynamite squad and... Um, the org can't really keep up when you're flying teams out. You have boot camps, uh, coaches, analysts, necessities like that. Uh, so it is a little bit unfortunate to see, but we're more about the team, the players themselves. They will stick together. They will stick this through. We saw them at the Europe Minor uh, for the Face It Major back in, ooh, shoot, when was that now? It's kind of tough to say. I think it was September over in London. And the, the, this team won the ESEA MDL Season 29 Global Challenge in Dallas. So a lot of... Uh, Obviously, skill on this team. You have Scream, known for his one-shot, the one-shot maestro. Uh, you see him there. Although he has been linked to possible moves away. And then uh, in another news story, you have Ston, the 16-year-old Danish uh, little protege, as you can say. He's joining Heroic on a trial basis. Now, this move is uh, one that's actually been quite welcomed in terms of response. Uh, he's joined... Heroic on the trial basis, like we said, completing the roster for now. Uh, the player made him a name for himself on Fragsters, uh, where he played for the team um, for the better part, starting at September in 2016. He's also the brother of Dragonfly, who plays for Fragsters right now. And the real debate is, how will Stan fit into this Heroic roster? Um, obviously... There's uh, a lot of things that you can uh, draw from his performances right now. You have a clear-cut ace. Uh, the kid has some talent, for sure. Uh, the last time I remember seeing Heroic play was at the GG Bet Shuffle, where they did show a bit of promise over there. At the tournament, I believe they even took a series off of Na'Vi, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Regardless, it'll be interesting to see how Stan fits into this roster. He's a, a young blood, 16 years old, such a, a, young, a young little lad. But again, I think back to uh, Brawlin on Fnatic, right? And what he's doing over there fit really well into the team. And, you know, sometimes you need those, the, those young bloods to kind of kick up the energy in the squad. Um, but in bigger news uh, announced earlier today, actually, was Mouse Sports re revealing their roster. Finally, enough of the memes, enough of the BS. Here's the squad right now. You got Rops, Kerrigan, Woxic, Chris J, and Frozen. Now Chris J um, baiting all of us with his memes if you're following his Twitter feed. Um, but he will be staying with the team. That's amazing news. He was kind of teasing that he would possibly go to Big, who is also in a bit of a limbo state right now. But they've also added Wadek, Waksik, pardon me, in place of Oscar as the primary opper. And currently, there's no update on the coach. But what is important to take away from this as well, which is not mentioned in the graphic of the announcement, is now that Oscar will be a free agent, right? So it'll be interesting to see what he decides to go from there. Now, the team will debut together at ECS Season 7 starting in Week 2. You'll be able to see the squad together, see what they can do. And their first LAN appearance is at April 12th at the ESL Pro League Season 9. So, again, it's a pretty stellar um, unity you have right now. Kerrigan is obviously a huge factor uh, coming from FaZe and then a short stint at Envy but a powerhouse player who's played for Mouse before uh, several times. Uh, so, you know, probably a little bit familiar with the organization, how things are going. Uh, again, Waksik is just uh, is such an exciting player to watch in terms of his opping skill. Very, um, how do I say this? Just dynamic, versatile. 
in the sense that he can play in a, a number of different spots. He's always catching the other team off guard and uh, was a, a heavy playing factor for, for Hellraisers, right? So, and that's another team that you don't know uh, what is going to happen from this point. Matt Sports finally completing their roster. Excellent news for them. And you can't really complain too much about that. And speaking of mouse sports players, you have the X mouse, the X mouse. You have Sonny, right, who's now been linked to a possible transfer uh, to Ents. Now, this was reported by DK, who also re reported originally uh, for those keeping in touch with the space that Cloud Nine had uh, was in discussions with Sonny. Uh, so originally, C C Nine was looking at Sonny in, in that possible move. However, as reported by DK, those discuss discussions stopped, and now um, Sonny is targeting Ents one way or the other. Um, so this is actually an interesting development, right? Because you have to think, who is Sonny going to possibly replace on this team? And even why would you want to replace at this team? You have a lot of these players having probably their most, I mean, easily, right, the most um, incredible time in their career going from uh, the European minor, all the way to the grand finals. Obviously, we're talking about Ents. Um, for four out of five of those players, that was their first time at a major. And, you know, the team really came to life. This is a team that has been building over time. So the thought to possibly switch this up is really a, a, a strange move at this time. You know, again, you're coming off the best, one of the best performances in, in the organization's history. You have a team with formula, that works well together, that gets along, that has a great work ethic. So to, to switch things up right now is, is kind of a weird gesture. It's a weird thought. Obviously, this is reported by multiple sources close to the player, as they like to say. When you think about who Sonny could replace, right? You have uh, Alu, solid opera. However, uh, as many of you know, he had a, a baby over the... Uh, time at the IAM Katowice Major. So possibly this is a player that wants to spend time with his family, his newborn child. Um, obviously, you don't want to be grinding CS when you're building a family and, and, and all of that jazz. So that is the one area which I can see Sonny entering um, uh, the, the Ents organization. Um, and also with that, Ents had withdrew from WESG, citing family personal issues or something to that effect. Uh, possibly linked to Alu and his his family now, right? That would make sense. Um, uh, with that, you could have X7 given a chance to pick up the primary opping role. We've seen him use the sniper. He's very talented with it. Maybe not up to the caliber of Alu, but it's certainly capable. Um, and with that, Sonny brings just a wealth of experience. And uh, most importantly, he brings consistency. Um, I was spent some time looking at Sonny's records, his stats, and things like that, and obviously... Um, you want to look far beyond stats when you're really digging deep and analyzing a player. But Sonny is a player that uh, he's fairly consistent, right? He puts up good numbers, he puts up good kills. He's able to clutch it out. And he was always a, a consistent factor for Mouse, which was why it's quite shocking when they decided that he they would release him. So he has confirmed that he's, you know, taking the step back from Mouse. Um, so that's for certain. Whether this ends uh, development progresses a little further, we'll say. And ultimately, it's uh, people can only speculate right now where Sonny would fit into this roster. As I mentioned in the beginning of the show, the CEO of Ents on Twitter denied allegations of player transfers at the time, um, citing something to the effect of, you know, we're happy with the team. The chemistry makes perfect sense. Uh, DK, obviously, who reported on the, the incident, not incident, but the story originally, uh, seemed confident in, in what he had learned or what he was told from sources citing a, a tweet that he had uh, written prior saying that CEOs are, are uh, very rarely in touch with uh, their organization, which is a strange gesture to me or a strange notion to me to think that a CEO is removed from their team in one way or another. Regardless, we'll be following that story and see how it develops. Uh, and on the story of Ents, we're going to switch. Usually we do this in the show. We're going to switch into our banter of the week, which is this crazy madman finished caster casting an Ents event as a volunteer gig um, throughout the IM Katowice Major. So let's go ahead and run that right now. Kotelinen, ja näin se vain on, että mies ylivoima tästä G2 Kotelle. Oi, ja se mies ylivoima menee saman tien. Aleksi B, ei on arvoa tämä kaveri näissä. Kaveri valottaa itsensä. B perseeseen, aivan käsittämätön moka. Jaa, alue ei lähde nyt sitten tähtäilemäänkaan, vaan juoksee suoraan 
Suoraan ovia kohti ja tää on aika mielenkiintoinen ratkaisu. Tää saattaa yllättää. Tää yllä... Vittu ammu kohti! Ei oo totta! Ei pysty! Ei pysty ollu ja nyt nyt vapisee kyllä allullakin pikku, pikkuisen tarkkaan. Katselkaa! Tämä on suora, suorastaan erotiikkaa! Eksemen! Suoraan tähtäimeen! Antakaa patokia! Jumalauta mitä peliä! Jo viimeinen! Missä on Jax? Hän tulee sieltä! Jax Barrow ei pysty mihinkään! Aleksi tulee ja ottaa nämä ilmaiset! Ranskalaiset sieltä tori grillin antamaan. Ei vielä pysty antamaan. Aleksi B antaa läissyä siellä juustohöylä kouraan. Toinen kolmas ja kaksi viimeistä enää. Ripulit on housussa. Ei vaan mitään. G2 lähtee kotiin. G2 lähtee kotiin. Keni S56 HP ja pommi on siellä aivan, aivan teillä tietämättä. Millä navigaattori hukkuu kaverilta aivan totaalisesti. Ja lentokentälle lähdetään kyllä. Se on siinä! Katsokaa rahaa tilannetta! Jätkillä ei ole dollareita mihinkään, näillä ei saa edes lentolippuja takaisin Amerikkaan! Where do you even start with a clip like that, right? Yeah, my mic was muted, but I was actually chuckling to myself and I was laughing, dying laughing the first time I had watched that. I love at the end where he goes, um... <laughs> says something of like, look what is no money referencing their economy, saying they don't even have a ticket to fly back to America. Um, the quarterfinal match of IAM Katowice when Ents pulled off um probably the, the biggest upset of the tournament super funny um huge shout out to that guy we'll make sure to put a link in the description for this on the vod but anyway let's talk about the big news right you have the patch notes the 313 patch notes that were released yesterday evening afternoon at some point huge news um a lot a lot of changes we're obviously gonna we'll touch on the biggest ones the first being r.i.p to the og my sweet little og baby um my scoped child is now um had its price increased back to the original of 3300 um which has brought it you know somewhat out of the competitive conversation again you had the gun that was uh you know it had its price reduced to just being 50 dollars more expensive than m4 um, and actually now that i think about it i don't think there was anything mentioned about the krieg which is the terrorist uh, counterpart to the AUG. So that's actually interesting. And I'm literally just thinking this as I'm saying it out loud. Nonetheless, uh, the AUG price increased. Um, there was a lot of debate about this weapon and the uh, role it had in the competitive meta. Players were no longer using the M4. A lot of people are saying that it's OP. Um, and there was mixed uh, sort of thought about that, right? There was uh, ESL and Betway and a bunch of people had talked about the AUG and its place in this game right now at this specific time um, and just how prominent it was and they got their thoughts and a lot of people were either on one side or the other saying that the AUG is too overpowered, maybe lower the fire rate or increase the price back. So needless to say, it's been reduced or increased back to its original price. So the real question is now that people have seen the AUG, seen what it can do and it's, you know, higher damage output, uh, higher armor pen, and obviously the scope is a huge factor, and when you're scoped in, your recoil is reduced. So, you know, now that people have really gotten to experience, see the power of the AUG, clearly it's superior to the M4, you have to ask yourself, uh, will this weapon actually make a, you know, appearance in, in competitive games now? You know, so we don't really know, only time will tell. Obviously, it's a lot more uh, expensive an investment to, to now use the AUG, but again, we've seen what it can do. It's a super powerful weapon, and it's it's worth considering now. So honestly, whether you agree with the price increase or not, you can kind of sit back and say, well, regarding the October update where it was reduced, now we can sit back and say that, you know, now we've tested it, now we know what it can do. Now, it, you're more players are much more likely to invest in, in an AUG despite the price right now. Fair enough. Also, you have the M4A1S. Now holds 25 bullets in the magazine and an extra mag in the reserve, totaling 70, 75 bullets total in the reserve. So you have more ammo in the M4. Again, this makes this weapon way more viable um, and even possibly, debatably, more of a viable weapon than, than the M4, right, compared to the silenced version. So we will see again how that will play out. A lot of this is just speculation at this point. Unfortunately, the news was dropped yesterday, so there's only a limited amount of real research and true analytical deep diving that we could do on the subjects. Um, a huge, huge um, part of this update that was in debate was the flashbang assist user interface. 
right? So as you can see on the screen, now when uh, one of your teammate, teammates flashbangs an enemy, they will appear on the kill feed. Um, a lot of people like this. A lot of people think this is cool. I think the graphic looks interesting myself. But uh, the real question is whether or not the flash assists are giving intel to the enemy team. Say you have two guys on a site. Um, obviously, one gets the kill, one gets the assist. If in the enemy is seeing in the kill feed that there is the flashbang assist medal. Now, that enemy can relay the information that there's two guys on the site. Um, this debate, I'm still a little unsure on. I get it. People are saying that a possible solution could be to make the assist in the kill, kill feed only visible to your own team. Uh, totally, you know, f works, actually. You know what I mean? That's, that's a logical or plausible solution to this problem. Um, but also, you got to think about people uh, flashing cross-map, right? Because then you can't tell where they are. Maybe you're, you're even relaying misinformation. So there's even a risk on going out on a limb and saying there's two guys on this site. Uh, or this or that. So how that's actually going to play in, again, we will see. Much speculation at this point. But arguably, what is the biggest part of this update is, again, on the economy. And as we saw in the October update, all eyes were focused on the economy update, which at the time um, was the, the opening round lo losing bonus going from 1400 to 1900 So essentially, you start each round with a one round losing bonus. So instead of getting $1,400, you get $1,900 um, for your team. Um, and again, when that part of the update, the October update was released, everyone was focusing on that. Everyone was talking about that. Everyone was talking about uh, you lose in the first round, get five kills or four kills in a bomb plant or just a bomb plant. And you know, you could full buy in the third round. And that's what people are saying. And everyone's focusing on that. Needless to say, the AUG obviously became the most telling story of that update. This, however, is uh, far more jarring in terms of, of changes. So I'll try my best to explain it to you. But basically, um, you still start with that opening round loss bonus of one. So you get $1,900 if you lose the first round. So that remains the same. Um, however, when you are... When you are accumulating your losing bonus, say you have three rounds, which brings you to 2,400, uh, or 2,900 in the fourth being 3,400 as a losing bonus. Now, instead of when you win a round, your bonus, this is just so, this is kind of hard to pitch in my head. So just bear with me here. But basically, when you lose um, a round, your, your losing bonus doesn't reset, right? So now at this point, your losing bonus only goes down by a counter. So now you have a counter. So say you are losing by four rounds and you lose one, um, or win a round, excuse me, and then lose the next. You would have a three round losing bonus as opposed to uh, a zero, right, at this point, because now it's based off a counter system. And what is most important to note about the counter system is that the counter, although the highest losing bonus you can get is four rounds, the counter does not stop at four. So say you lose six rounds in a row, your lose your count, your lose loss bonus, loss bonus counter, god damn, this is hard to say, is at six, okay? So if you lose the next two rounds, you get $3,400 still, and even on the fourth or the third loss, right? Because you have six, five, and four. Um, what does this mean exactly? It means a lot. I think that a lot of people are having their, their, uh, a hard time wrapping their head around, heads around this, as I am, clearly. Um, but what it's basically, what you can draw from this is that there's going to be more gun rounds, uh, less eco rounds, right? Because people aren't going to be able to break an economy as easily because it is uh, very troubling when you have the, the losing bonus, you win a round, and then you get destroyed um, and lose all your guns, all your weapon, and, and all your money in utility. Um, so now you're going to be able to have that sort of reserve in terms of losing bonus. So this part is going to be hard to see how it actually plays out. Uh, one interesting thing I thought was that this is being implemented into the World Electronic Sports Games right now. And I think it was, uh, I'm not sure who tweeted this, which player, but basically they said, that this patch was announced two hours ago and now we're playing in it. So now the tournament is going on with the 313 patch. That's obviously insane to me. 
right? Because you don't know what, I don't even think players can, can really adjust to the influx of money or, you know, you have to actually th sit down and think about what this is going to do to the economy. And I think a lot of people are speculating and talking on Reddit right now. And a lot of people on Twitter are discussing what the possible implications of this economy change are going to be. And right now, yeah, it's tough to say, but mostly you can say that there's going to be more gun rounds and less eco rounds. That's the first thing that, that comes to mind. How it actually plays out, how it actually shapes the competitive meta, it's tough to say. You know, you're really just going to have to see how this one pans out. And just like I said in the October update, um, the AUG was the, was the main story. And they did other things, you know. They, they lowered the cost of the shotgun. So maybe, you know, maybe you got five-man shoddy rosters running around. You don't know. You can't tell. But basically, that is, that is the synopsis of the economy element to the 313 patch. And if I explain that in a rough manner, which I'm thinking that I might have, you can always go into the CSGO dev blog and kind of read those over for your notes um, and check out Reddit, right? Look at Reddit, see what people are talking about. That's what I've been doing. And play, play the game as much as you can to try to understand it, try to get a feel for it. And this is probably a story that we're going to be talking about for the next couple of weeks and see how it develops uh, through the tournaments. And obviously in the WESG, I'm going to have to catch some, some of those games myself and see how that pans out. So that's it for the 313 patch. There was obviously some uh, other elements in terms of maps, things that were more or less important. They did, as I said, reduce the price of some shotguns, uh, including the sawed off. And uh, yeah, but those were the main points for sure. Those are the takeaways from, from the patch. But like I said, go to DevBlog and check it out yourself. And that is basically the brunt of the show. Before we go, I want to give a shout out to my man, Baby J, Hunter Shaleen, ex Halo professional, making our hot spawn play of the week this week. Let's go ahead and run it. Baby J, you sick man. How could you run around with USP like that and do that? How could you do that? Sick man. What makes that clip for me, though, on, in all honesty, is just the running and gunning. Obviously, you know that uh, <laughs> deals a heavy blow to the accuracy in Counter-Strike. So the fact that Hunter, I'm sorry, Baby J is able to run around and just pop, 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 pop. Get the five, pill, five kill pistol ace is just sick to me. Um, huge shout out to him. But guys, that's uh, pretty much all we have for you today. Obviously, we're going to be following the economy patch uh, a lot more closely and see how that develops. The AUG, uh, hugely interesting narrative in terms of the competitive meta. So there are big changes to Counter-Strike. This is, a, again, an exciting time. And obviously, if you're watching, I, uh, I hugely appreciate it, guys, for tuning in. We're here every Thursday at 2 p.m. Central, produced by UGC Events and fueled by Hotspawn. Go check them out for esports data, news, analysis, everything, league, CSGO, Dota, um, and they have some other things in the pipeline that I'm not at liberty to mention, but just an amazing site. And I'm working on a Halo piece soon. You might want to go check that out over at hotspawn.com. But needless to say, guys, thank you for watching. As always, my name is Cody Luongo, and I will see you next week.